Let's say you have a lot of different files that arrive every day or throughout the day, and those files are of slightly different types or the schemas are different, or sometimes you're not really exactly sure what is in that schema, and you need to make decisions about how to process those files. They need to end up in SQL database tables, but you're not sure, sure where those are best to land or where they should go. Well, you can use Azure Data Factory to provide those mechanisms for you. And I'm going to show you an example of how to do that using Data Factory's data flows capability. So on my screen, I have an Azure Data Factory with a data flow that's already loaded. And in my data flow, I have three different examples of how to solve this problem. And these are going to fit different patterns and different solution areas that you have with processing different kinds of files for SQL database tables. And when you build data flows, and when you execute those in Data Factory, you have this option. This option is having all three of these or three different sources of files that are all processing across different streams from left to right. And you can put these all into a single data flow. And these will all execute against the same Spark job in the back end for you. And then I have different syncs. I have four different syncs here in the data flow. It's very flexible when you use data flows to be able to work with multiple different streams of data. So let's start from the top. And what I have in this case is I'm receiving files of tweets. So these are collected probably from some sort of a data collector that is a simple process that is out there querying tweets from specific users. In this case, I have two files that I want to read in, and those files are both from my own personal tweets and a colleague of mine, Michael Reese. Uh, this is from one of his USQL examples. And so the way that I'm, I'm gathering those is by using a wildcard. So let me step back for a second and show you my data set that I'm using for the source. It's called tweets, and it is a text limited data set. So these files uh, coming from uh, Twitter are CSV files. And so they're comma separated, and uh, let's see, there is no header on these, okay? So I don't know what the schema looks like. And since I don't know what the schema looks like, and I'm having multiple files that could have different schemas, I've set no schema in my data set at all. It's completely empty. So back in my data flow, you'll see the projection for the source has nothing in it, and that's okay. You can work with that in data flow. We allow that, in fact, it makes it very flexible, and that's what this demo is trying to get across. Now in the source options where I was before is where I'm using the wildcard. So um, if you look at my data set again, you'll see that all I'm pointing to in my connection is just a container and blob store. So what I have to do is I define then the path. So I'm defining the folders, the, the, the path where these CSV files are. And I'm saying give me anything that ends with tweets. So star is representing anything and then ending in tweets.csv. And the wildcard you can use here is anything that uh, the Linux globbing or the Linux wildcarding that you use in file paths and file names can take, can be put into here. Now, the second thing I'm doing is I'm creating a new column name that's going to store the name of the file. For every file that is found that matches that pattern, it will get stored as file name A. This is a way to track lineage of each record within your data set where it came from, the original file that it came from. So all I'm doing in this case in the top row is I'm simply then landing that into a brand new SQL table. So I have a data set called SQL Tweets and this data set is creating a new table. So my connection, I can say create a table called dbo.tweets. And since it's brand new, no schema, let's create the schema on the fly. So Data Factory will create that based upon the data types, mapping the data types from Spark into the SQL data types for me. I don't have to do that. This is all I have, these two transformations to do this. So in the settings, I'm saying that I want to recreate the table. <clears throat> I'm allowing inserts. My mapping, I'm just saying auto map because everything that's coming in, I want to land into this new schema in this new database table. That's the easy, uh, very easy pattern. That is that top pattern. The second one, I'm looking at taxi data. <clears throat> so in this case, I'm using a data set called taxi files. This is again a text limited file. And I do have headers in these files. So it's comma separated. Again, I'm pointing just to a container and I have no schema again for these files. So the way that I'm pulling out the taxi data is I'm using the wildcard path. I'm saying it's in sample data. And right in sample data, I want just these two files. I want trip fair one and trip data one. And I'm using a comma separated list between curly braces. 
to get those two files. And then in this one, I'm storing the file name's file name. So what will happen is when I go over to my data preview, you'll see that I will get, let me uh, put this into full screen here so we can explore the data a little bit. So there's the taxi data. And then at the right hand side, where I have the new column storing the name of the file. You'll see the file name that matched where that was used to get that data from. Let me actually go back to that, uh, the previous source and show you that on here as well. So in this case, the file name has the fully qualified path and these are the mic tweets and then my tweets will be after that. So that's what that column does. Now uh, let's continue on that second path. So now that we have the, the source data that we want, what we're going to do is we're going to use a conditional split. So remember the file name is being stored in that file name B. So now I can say, in this case, I'm going to say that if it is the trip data versus the fare data, I want to load different SQL database table. So I have two different sinks and each have a different data set. And the first one is called trip data that points to the trip data table. And I have that table schema here because this is an existing schema in this case. In this case, the second stream here, both of these um, flows, both of, the, both of these streams are, gonna, are going to land in a SQL database table that already exists. So in the data set, I have defined that table schema and I'm pointing to that table. This is what I want to load. I want to load this schema. All right, so what you do then in the mapping is I can just either map manually or I can build rules or do auto mapping for this. I have these mapped manually, which is fine as well. It's completely up to you and how you want to map those. But the, the point to the second stream is that I have a conditional split that determines for me which table to load based on the file name coming in. I'm just parsing that file name. The last option is parameterization. So I have two different kinds of parameters for this data flow. I have a data flow parameter which I call file name. So I'm going to send in the name of a file to read by source. And that will go right here in the option. So again, I have a generic data set that points to just a container, a text limited file with a header, and then I generate a path name. So I use a string and cat. And I'm saying sample data movies slash whatever file name is sent in to this data flow as a parameter, making it very flexible. And then on the other side, on the sync, I'm just seeking this directly to a database table. That is a parameterized data set. So instead of pointing directly to a table with a schema, I leave the schema empty. And I say, load whatever database table name that I happen to give it. All right. So in both of these data sets, I have, I'm uh, sorry, both these parameters, I have default value sets. The default parameter for the data flow is moviesdb.csv. And then the default parameter for the data sets is movies with ratings. I'm going to load that table. So those are three different techniques. Now what we can do to actually execute these is we have to run from a, from a pipeline because when we are here in data preview mode, we're just looking at a, uh, a snapshot of the data that's in memory in data frames within that Spark instance. So let's go ahead and run this from a pipeline. I've got this pipeline queued up here and I'm pointing to the data flow that we're, uh, that we're designing. Notice I have defined the defaults for my parameters. So there is my data flow parameter and there is my data set parameter. I'm going to leave those as default. Those are just fine. And we will run this. And this is going to take about uh, one uh, to two minutes to execute from end to end. So I'm going to pause for a minute and we'll come back and see where we're at at that time. Okay, we are back at a minute, 22 seconds later, the pipeline completed, it finished all three of those different uh, table loading techniques from different file types and file names. And there's one thing I want to show you before I show you the results in Management Studio, and that is that, uh, for example, which one did I want to show you? Oh, yes. So on the tweets where we created the table on the fly, you'll notice that the schema coming into the sync from my source had no names for the columns because I said there were no headers. There are no headers in this file. And also notice the icon indicating that these are all drifted fields because I have no schema at all defined on the on the source files. So they all come through as drifted fields, which is absolutely fine. So it's very important on these techniques when you are working with uh, undefined data or unknown schemas that you allow schema drifts on both your source and your sync. Yeah, on your sync, there we go. And so what happens is when you map these, the uh, names of the columns and the data types will be stored in the target database table. All right, so now let's go back to go over to the database and we can see that this is the um, database table that was created. 
and there we have the call zero one two three and the file name is so it created that table on the fly generated all of those columns in the data for me the other ones we loaded were the uh, this is the the manual mapping we did for the taxi data and then over here is the movies with ratings uh, which we loaded from the movies table this is the one that we had at the bottom of the data flow where we were using a parameter to <clears throat> to choose which files and tables to load. Okay, so let's review. I'm going to go back to my data flow, but uh, the, the important things to keep in mind are to use schema drift if you don't know the schemas, to use the wildcarding on the paths to just have a container defined for your data set and to use a blank data set schema. And again, no projection on these either. You can do that if you know that information about your source. In fact, the more you know about your data, the more the more information you have about your source, the more you can create projections. It makes it a little bit easier to work with data flows, but also keep in mind it makes things more brittle because they can change if things change over time. Going schema-less, flexible schema is a very flexible method to use. Thanks for watching.